There's a few baseline chemicals in Space Station 14 that are good to get acquainted with. Whether you're just a passenger who's trying to find a way to self-medicate, a chemist looking for things to make, or a doctor not knowing which medicines to apply. Sure, you can press the guidebook button and go through the chemicals, and just look through all of the different chemicals to figure out what you should be using or making. I'm just going to explain them briefly to give you a better idea of where to look. We're just going to start in a loose formation, and there's no particular order here. Bicaridine is the bread and butter chemical of healing. Brute damage. What is brute damage? Brute damage is blunt slash and piercing. So those are the most common forms of damage in the game. Space damage does blunt damage, fist does blunt or pierce or slash, whatever. Bicaridine, in its actual usage, will heal two brute for every half unit, and it overdoses at 15 units, so you do not want to go over this threshold. Now, I'm not the best chemist at all, but I will simply explain how to make these at least somewhat efficiently very quickly. In order to make bicaridine, it's easy. You just need oxygen, sugar, and carbon. And they, it, it will make an operavlin, and then the extra carbon will help make bicaridine, and that's how you make bicaridine. Very simple. Dermaline is the most common chemical used to heal uh, heat and cold damage. It is better than kelotane, and it is not much harder to make than kelotane, so this is why you will most often see it. Uh, thermaline, for every half a unit, will heal 1.5 heat and 1.5 cold. It can OD, but here's the thing, though. OD and thermaline isn't that big of an issue because it heals cold, so you're only going to take a little bit of cold damage, and asphyxiation will heal on its own. So if the person is conscious and you overdose them on thermaline, if somebody has 80 or 90 heat damage... Uh, don't worry too much about giving them like 15 or 20 units because it will just heal the asphyxiation and it will he even heal a decent bit of the cold. Dermaline, also very simple. You just need silicon, carbon, and then you need two parts oxygen and phosphorus. And that makes dermaline. And remember the precursor for that is also kelotane, so you might as well just go all the way to dermaline because it's just better. Bilovine is the anti-poison drug. It can often be found in pill forms or you're going to end up being given a decent bit of it. However, there is a good chance that it will make you puke when there's uh, at least 20% of the reagent, but it's only a 2% chance and it heals one poison for every half unit. So if you take a lot of poison, uh, doctors may have to take time injecting you or you yourself may have to take some time injecting it. And it will make you drunk if you take too much of it. And people do uh, freak out a little bit when they take too much dialovine. They think you like poison them or whatever. But you definitely don't want to overdose more than 20 units because it does brute damage, which is, again, kind of uh, not good. You don't want to be hurting people with overdoses. In order to make dialovine, very simple as well. You just need potassium, silicon, and nitrogen. And that will make dialovine. Erythrazine is how you cure radiation damage effectively. It is this interesting cloudy orange color. It will, it does damage, guaranteed brute damage, but it cures through radiation for every half unit. This is typically cut with bicaridine, as in there is a mixture of bicaridine and erythrazine together, or you'll just have it administered at the same time. But there is no overdose to it, so what normally ends up happening is it'll just give you a ton of erythrazine and then just give you like a minor bicaridine injection and you're good to go. To make erythrazine, it's a little bit more complicated due to the mixture of it. So in order to make the most efficient you can in one beaker, it would be 5 potassium, silicon, and nitrogen. And then 15 radium. And 30 hydrogen. Which remember, that this is a precursor for hyranolin. And then the hydrogen makes erythrazine. And thankfully, due to how much it heals, you don't really need a lot. So it's not too cumbersome to make a ton of it. On the lesser side of things, it's hyranolin. Hyranolin is basically just erythrazine, but it has a chance of making you vomit every time, which if you vomit it out, you will not get the radiation healing, but it doesn't do the brute damage. So in a pinch or very minor radiation damage, uh, this is, might just be a little bit easier to have, but you can overdose on hyronolin, so that is worth considering. To make hyronolin, very simple. It is just potassium, silicon, nitrogen, and then some radium. And there you go. Dexaline Plus. Dexaline Plus is a very, very important chemical for preventing people from dying in uh, of crit. 
Dexalin Plus heals 6.5 air loss per every half unit, so it basically makes being a critical state uh, null for taking asphyxiation damage. It has a crazy damaging overdose, though, so you do not want to overdose past 25 units. It also cures Lexerin, but that's a pretty minor usage. Uh, something it doesn't mention is that it actually does uh, restore blood, so it is also a very good medicine to inject into somebody if they got killed through brute damage because they're going to be bleeding. And it is almost always worth injecting somebody with 20 or so units when they are critical or if you're defibbing them because this will help stabilize them significantly. Excellent is a little bit harder to make because it actually requires a piece of plasma and you have to grind it up in a all-in-one grinder. Getting plasma isn't too hard. You just have to ask Cargo for it nicely or maybe even Science. They'll be willing to give it up. And then you have to mix it with oxygen, which will make Dexalin. But plasma is a catalyst. So what that means is that the plasma isn't used in order to make Dexalin. In order to make Dexalin Plus, because you don't really care about Dexalin itself, is you have to just mix it with carbon and iron. So... That is the most efficient usage of how to make as much Dexalin Plus in one beaker. And if you want to keep the plasma, you could always just throw it into a chem master like this. And it will keep the plasma in a beaker. And it's easy to mass produce it because of this. And finally, I would say iron is probably just one more chemical that's worth knowing about. Um, iron isn't something you like have to make. It's just a baseline reagent. But iron increases your blood level. And increasing blood level to a certain degree like if you lose too much blood you're going to constantly take blood loss damage so if you give somebody a lot of iron which you can't od on it you will essentially help them recover because blood loss heals on its own as long as you have enough blood in your system so you can almost basically think of iron as blood because we don't have blood transfusions or anything that advanced in the game at the moment um and to make iron well you don't make iron you could just do that and that's a big beaker of iron there's a couple of other chemicals that you will uh, see sometimes. Um, they're nowhere near as common as these ones, and they're not as essential. Like these are uh, these are the chems that will basically heal anyone anywhere. Uh, cellular damage is very rare, and if you ever need to make that, it's called phalanxamine. I'm not going to cover exactly how to do it because uh, the amount of times I have had to use this in recent times in space station is incredibly low so like i'm not gonna if you're looking at a beginner guide you're probably not too worried about making it um one other one i will cover is ambazol ambazol is not too difficult to make and what it does is it cures ongoing zombie infection so in order to make ambazol you need to first make dialovine which you just simply do silicon nitrogen and potassium and I'll make dialovine, and then you need some ammonia. And to make ammonia, it's just uh, three parts hydrogen to one part nitrogen. So in this case, I'll do 15 hydrogen and one nitrogen. And that'll be 15 units of dialovine, 20 units of ammonia. And in order to make ambazol, you need blood. And in a emergency, you could always just take it from yourself. And once you inject it into the beaker you'll have ambazol and another useful one is ambazol plus ambazol plus will make it so here's an ongoing zombie infection and provides immunity for future infections when there's at least five units of this reagent so the way this works is actually rather interesting if you just inject yourself with five units like through a syringe and well i actually I injected myself 10 that's fine and as soon as you give yourself five units of Amazon plus even if it doesn't it doesn't stay in your system but you'll literally get the zombie immune component and it's essentially a vaccine and it makes you immune to the zombie virus so those are also incredibly important in order to make Amazon plus which is ultimately the goal because it's a cure and a vaccine you need zombie blood and zombie blood is well blood from a zombie and it's pretty easy to do so like you could just come out to a dead zombie which if it's a zombie round there's going to be a lot and you just draw from the dead body and inject it into the beaker and you'll i'll show you how the mix works so i had 30 ambazol in here it will overdo some blood but five units of ambazol plus is a cure so you can just sit here and keep drawing and injecting in the beaker and every time you do this you're making one vaccine so that is very powerful in order to prevent 
zombie outbreak. To, it's one of the most active and important things you could possibly do to stop a zombie outbreak. Ryko is another chem that is sort of slept on in my opinion. It is really powerful for one reason. It's easy to make, it just takes oxygen, carbon, and sugar. And then you just have to make dialovine, which is simply silicon, nitrogen, potassium. And that makes 90 units of trico. Now, if you look at trico, what it does, it cures basically everything. It doesn't do a lot of healing, but here's the thing. You can't OD on it, but you have to be below 50 damage. The fact that you can't OD on it makes it a fantastic supplement in basically any treatment because, well, the goal of treating somebody is to get them fully healthy. So when you get to them to below 50 or they just have small wounds of multiple categories, which isn't that uncommon, you can just inject. You basically just look at how much damage they have. If they have 50 damage, you could give them 50 units of this if you want. It's not hard to make. Uh, obviously, that's not the most efficient, but you don't ever have to worry about ODing them. And I'll just throw this in here as a little fun fact. The Medibots, if you ever get Science to make you one, they automatically inject you with uh, Trico as soon as you're hurt. So, like, if you touch a light and you have any damage under 50, they'll automatically heal you. So, these little guys, or just making Trico, can really make healing small wounds incredibly easy. That is how to make the essential medicines and what they do in Space Station. Um, I'm not going to explain how to use them. Uh, if you need to, you can watch the medical guide of how to administer medicine. Uh, this is just explaining the basics of the chemicals. Thank you for watching. If you got more questions, um, there are definitely better chemists out there, 100% better chemists out there, and better doctors. But seeing a spread of... Jugs like this is very commonplace in medical now, so it is good to know what these do without having to stare at a guidebook. Like flipping through 100 chemicals in a guidebook isn't going to help you figure out which ones do what very quickly.